First and foremost, I would like to give all to lock your Shalom, Shalom Israel. First and foremost, I would like to give all praises, honor, and glorification to the Most High God, Yahweh, by Hashem, Mashiach, Malak, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, who the world calls God, and Yahweh Shai being the name of his beloved Son, who the world called Jesus Christ, whom is a savior of the nation of Israel. This is Brother Malachi out of the WFI Detroit camp, coming at you with another cold cut lesson, which is entitled The Massacre at Dragada. So this is the massacre at Dragada, going into the so-called white man, his devil horns, him rape, robbing, murdering, and slaughtering of the so-called black, Hispanic, Native Americans. And this is more specifically going into the Israelites that dwelt in Ireland prior to the so-called white man colonizing, raping, and conquering that land and kicking the Israelites out of that land and selling them into slavery throughout different colonies in America. Right? So we're going to bring out the, the visual, the readings, and we're going to go into the precepts and the scriptures to validate and substantiate these things that we're reading. Because we have to understand who the so-called white man is. He's the devil that the Bible speaks of. He's Hashatan. He's the physical counterpart of Satan on the earth. All his works that he have done in, on the earth are works of wickedness. Raping, murdering, slaughtering, pillaging, and doing all manner of uh, wicked and abominable and God-forsaken things. So we about to bring it out. And this is from the book, The Missing Link, Part 4. All right, so we have it right here. Matter of fact, I'm going to pull it up. We'll pull it out rather. Right, so we got the missing link part four. The Negro is actually the Negro question part four, the missing link. All right, so we got the book right here. This was written by Lee Cummings. Right, so I advise every brother and sister to cop this book. $10 on Amazon. You cannot beat it. It's knowledge, it's wisdom, it's understanding. And this is going to help you move, maneuver through this world. This is going to help you to understand who the so-called white man is, who your enemies are. Because as the scriptures say, never trust our enemy. That's in Sirach 12 and 16 and Sirach chapter 6 and verse 13. Right? So we have information on the massacre at Dragada that took place in Ireland in 1641. Also known as the 1641 Rebellion. All right, so let's play it. You had the massacre at Dragada that took place in Ireland, 1641 Rebellion. You had Esau coming in, slaughtering our men, women, and children. Israelite babies on pump pitchforks. Check this out. It says this black Irish woman is being roasted over coals of fire. Or she's being poked with a pitchfork. All right, so that's the Eve. The so-called white man, the devil, is poking her with a pitchfork upon coals of fire. These were by the actions of the English soldiers when they invaded Ireland. It has been reported that Cromwell ordered the deaths of the priesthood. And Cromwell is Oliver Cromwell. He was a tyrant. <laughs> That was responsible for a lot of deaths of blacks throughout Ireland. You had Oliver Cromwell, the serpent, the devil. Now we know the reason why the English tortured the blacks from West Africa and Europe when they came into the slave colonies. Torture was a practice of theirs on the other side of the Atlantic. So their actions in the Americas are consistent with their past behavior. In fact, they continue to practice torture even in this generation. They taser old men, women, and children on the streets of America. They choke, beat, and murder unarmed men and women on the streets of America. Remember, the Irish were black in 1600. Right, so this is the gruesome things that the so-called white man done to the Irish. And the original Irish are so-called black men, women, and children. But we know black is just a color of a crayon the original Irish were actually Israelites that's who we are according to the Bible the Israelites because they would like to tell you 
and they would like for you to believe that only Israelites were enslaved from the west coast of Africa. No, you had Israelites all over the world, right? You had Israelites in, in, in Britain, right? You had Israelites throughout Europe, right? You had Israelites in the Wales, right? You had Israelites in Ireland, right? You had Israelites all throughout Europe, right? But the so-called white man wants you to believe that you were some monkey swinging on vines in Africa, eating bananas, butt naked in the jungle. No, you, you come from a line of kings and priests. That's in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. That's also in Exodus chapter 19 and verse 6. Right? But nonetheless, this is what the so-called white man did. This is the history that they don't want you to know about. They want to keep teaching you about Thomas Jeff Jeff Jefferson, Andrew Jackson, uh, uh, George Washington, right? Did he have wooden teeth? Did he not have wooden teeth? And that makes no damn sense, man. Right? That's not our history. That's nothing we should be concerned about. Right, the so-called white man, his history, he don't want you to know the true in-depth details of his history, right? Because it comes from a line of murder, slaughtering, raping, and doing all manner of wicked and abominable acts. Right? We're not concerned about George Washington teeth. We don't give a damn about Thomas Jefferson horse. Right? We don't care about the damn uh you know, all these wicked uh so-called white people that colonized our people throughout the years, right? We don't care about Abraham Lincoln because Abraham Lincoln, he actually owned slaves, right? All of the presidents, right, own slaves. You understand? So we about to go into the precepts, the scriptures, and we're going to bring it out. Let's get Habakkuk, the second chapter. All right, let's get Habakkuk, the second chapter. It reads, I will stand upon my watch and set me up upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. So we are set up as the watchman, right? A watchman in the ancient world was set up to give warning to the people of impending doom and danger, right? They will sit up upon the walls and they will warn the people and blow the trumpet of the impending danger that was coming upon the land, right? You may have been invaded or, 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 you know, someone may have came to spy out the land. Hey, the watchman is supposed to be on his P's and Q's and have his eyes always open to detect danger that's coming to the land. So we're set up as watchmen to warn our people what's coming on this earth. Precepts on that is Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17, Isaiah chapter 62 and verse 7, and also Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 1. So it say, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that read of it. So we have to make these prophecies as clear as possible to our people. We have to make you to understand what the Lord is saying in the scriptures. Because in church or in seminary school, they're not going to teach you the true in-depth breakdowns and the, and the truth of the scriptures. They're going to teach you the falsehood. Or they're going to break things down with no understanding. So we have to make things plain upon tables to our people. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak, meaning a prophecy shall speak. You can read about that in 2nd Edges chapter 6 and verse 15. So these prophecies are speaking in 2022. You see droughts in China all throughout Europe. You see Texas getting plagued, right? You see California still going through, you know, massive earthquakes and wildfires. All hell is breaking loose over the earth. And who is doing it? The Heavenly Father. He's judging this world which he have created. That's in 2nd Edges, the ninth chapter. Why? For the wickedness of the world. For enslaving the blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans. For robbing us of our culture, our language, our history. Raping our children. And doing wicked acts. So now the Heavenly Father is judging this world. So it says, at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Right? So it say his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him. That's talking about the so-called white man. He's not upright. The scriptures say that which is crooked cannot be made straight. So though you try to so-called pray for the white man and love the white man and join hand in hand with the white man, as it says in Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 21, that's not going to make him upright. He was created to be that crooked serpent. 
That's in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 15, I believe. And also Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 14. Right, that which is crooked cannot be made straight, and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. So it say, but the just shall live by his faith. And we are the just. The just are the Israelites, and we're going to live by the faith of the Lord. That's in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. We walk by faith, not by sight. Right? And faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, as it states in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. Read on. Yea, also because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home. Now, when it states he transgresseth by wine, that's talking about by his philosophy, by his doctrine, and by his wicked knowledge. That's spoken about in Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 9. That's not literal wine. Although the so-called white man is a drunkard on the physical level, right? They get drunk. They want to fight. They want to beat up the bar, right? They want to do all manner of wickedness when they get drunk because their true perverse spirit comes out of them, right? So let's hold Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 5, and let's get Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 9, going into what the wine represents. It reads, Stay yourselves and wonder, cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. So let's say they are drunk, but not with actual physical wine. So this is spiritual wine that the people of the earth are drunken by, chiefly the so-called white man. He drunk off of wickedness. He's drunk off of rape. He's drunk off of murder. He's drunk off of robbery, theft, extortion, larceny. He's drunk off these different wicked spirits. For the Lord have poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep and have closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, have he covered. And the vision of all has become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. Right. So that's it on that. The point is they are drunk with wicked knowledge and philosophy on the left hand side. So going back to Habakkuk, the second chapter. In the fifth verse, it say, Yea, also because he transgressed by wine, he is a proud man. And who is the proudest man on the earth? The so called white man. The scriptures call him, O thou most proud. You can read about that in the whole Obadiah, the first chapter. Right? The whole book of Obadiah, rather. There's only one chapter of Obadiah. But you can read about it in the whole book of Obadiah about the pride of the so called white man. And say, neither keep of at home, who enlarge of his desire as hell and as death and cannot be satisfied, but gather unto him all nations and heap of unto him all people. Right. So he doesn't keep at home. Ultimately, he come from the mountains. You understand? And he really has no heritage. Right. Because even when you check out Mount Seir, that was given unto the whole rights. Right. So he stole that land. He stole the mountains even from the whole rights. Right. So the so-called white man has no land. He has no culture. He has no, uh, uh, no, 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 uh, he has no nothing, man, right? So he has to steal all these different things from Israel. So the original Irish was so-called black men. And it say, and cannot be satisfied, but gather unto him all nations and heap of unto him all people. Let's get, Salaki, let's get Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 38, proving that the so-called white man, he comes from the mountain. He doesn't have any land, right? That's in Malachi, the first chapter. This is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 38. Of whom the world was not worthy, they wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in caves of the earth, right? So the so-called white man comes from the caves of the earth. He doesn't come from Ireland, right? He doesn't come from Europe, right? He's not the original, uh, 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 you know, people of Europe, man. Huh? Right, the original people were the Israelites, right? You so-called blacks, right? Chiefly Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. We inhabited these different lands throughout Europe, right? Throughout Scotland, England, Ireland. So this is Job chapter 30 and verse 5. It says, They were driven forth from among men. They cried after them as after a thief to dwell in the cliffs of the valleys, in the caves of the earth, and in the rocks. 
So that's what the so-called white man comes from, the caves, the valleys, the earth, the rocks. Among the bushes they braid, under the nestles they get, they were gathered together. They were children of fools, yea, children of base men. They were viler than the earth. Right, so they were more vile, more odious, and more sicker than the earth, man. Right, and the earth brings forth all kind of sickness. Right, and the so-called white man, he's more viler and wicked than that. So, <clears throat> going back to the video, this goes to show you some of the acts and crimes of Esau. All right, bear with me. So this is the massacre at Dragada. Real quick, let me get Nahum the third chapter. And we're going to wrap this up, right? And most high willing, I might come back with a more in-depth, detailed lesson. But it's just quick, straight to the point, going into Esau wickedness. So this is Nahum. And ultimately, this is the curses that befell Israel. That's why we were enslaved. And, and, and took in off our rulership and dominion. This is Nahum chapter 3 and verse 10. It say, Yet was she carried away, she went into captivity. That she is talking about the Israelites. Right? That's in Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 2. I believe Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 32, if I'm not mistaken. Let me bring that out. Isaiah 54 and 5, Revelation, the 12th chapter. Let me get that in Jeremiah 31 and 32. Here we go. It say, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. So the Lord said he was a husband unto Israel. Meaning we're the woman. That's plain. And Jake doesn't understand that. Right? I remember I was breaking that down to one Jake who's not in the truth no more. He he just couldn't get it. Right? He was laughing. He was scoffing. He was making mockery. What you talking about Israel woman? What you talking about? And he couldn't understand the precepts. Right? But where is that guy at now? He's not in this thing. Right? But this is Nahum chapter 3 and verse 10. Yet was she carried away. She went into captivity. Her young children also were dashed in pieces at the top of all the streets. Right? Because when you read some information from the massacre at Jagada, they actually were dashing our children in pieces. And let me bring out this information. It's a... And it may be a little hard to, to see. Let's see if I can enlarge it. Maybe it's still a little hard to see. But um, I'll show the visual. This is an Eve having her baby ripped out of her stomach. And thrown in the fire by the so-called white man. Right? So it say, the scribes write that at 1 a.m., seven Baptist Pope servants broke into Mr. Atkins' house. Mr. Atkins was a Jake and beat his brains out and then raped his wife, who was pregnant with child. It states that after they raped her, they took the unborn child and sacrificed it in the fire. In other scenes from this horrific event, you can see the English drowning the black Irish children in rivers. It would be cruel and inhumane that after these people suffer such shame, death, and humiliation, that their story should go untold and that history should be ignorant of their former existence. So this, the white man don't want you to know about this. He don't want you to know about how he ripped babies out of mother's womb, raped the wife, and sacrificed the baby in the fire, and beat the brains out of the father. Right, let's get that in Leviticus chapter 20. Going into the, the, the child sacrifice, which is wicked. Let 
This is Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying again, Thou shalt say to the children of Israel, Whosoever he be of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel, that give any of his seed unto Molech, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. So the so-called white man has to get put to death because he took the seed of an Israelite and he sacrificed it onto Molech in the fire. Right? That's what these devils did, man. Huh? And then they say, and I will set my face against that man and I will cut him off from among his people because he have given of his seed onto Molech to defile my sanctuary and to profane my holy name. Now, chiefly, this is going into an Israelite giving his seed onto Molech, but it can apply to the so-called white man. He's even more wicked and vile because he took the seed of an Israelite and he gave it unto Molech in the fire. So how sick and perverted can you be? How can these people be saved when all throughout history they have done things that's not worthy of salvation, man? You can't be saved if you're sacrificing children in a fire, if you're raping women, committing adultery, murdering unjustly. Let me get that real quick in Exodus chapter 23 and verse 12. This is Exodus chapter 23 and verse, Shalaka, actually verse 7. It say, keep thee far from a false matter, and the innocent and righteous slay thou not, for I will not justify the wicked. Right? So the Lord said, don't slay the innocent and the righteous. And who are the innocent and the righteous? The Israelites. Right? And he have killed us, murdered us, and slayed us unjustly in the land. She puked. Right? This is Numbers chapter 35 and verse 16. She puked. Numbers chapter 35 and verse 16. Right? Numbers chapter 35 and verse 16. Right? It say. And if he smite him with an instrument of iron so that he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. And if he smite him with throwing a stone wherewith he may die and he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. And if he smite him with an hand of weapon of wood wherewith he may die, he is a he and he die. He is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. Right. So going back to verse 16, that instrument of iron. That's what, right, the English smitten the Irish, the, uh, the Irish with, slock it. That's what the so-called white man smitten Israelite babies with, that pitchfork, which is that instrument of iron. Show you the visual again. Right? And this is also a brother, an Irishman that was hung. It looks familiar, don't it? Right? And this was in Ireland. This was in 1641. So they've been hanging out people, lynching out people and burning them in the fire. Right? So this is Esau killing an Israelite baby with a pitchfork, which is that instrument of iron. Right? And an instrument of iron can apply to any form of weaponry that comes from iron, whether that's a bullet. Right? But more specifically, we're going into this pitchfork. This is sick. Let me check out this. It say, this scribe says that this is great tyranny done to SR, his wife and children. If you take a look at this scene, they have ripped the child out of the black Irish man wife's stomach and tossed it on the ground. Right. So here's the child tossed on the ground. And he ripped it out of the Israelite woman's stomach. This is this is this is God forsaken. All right. So what's gonna happen to Esau? We're gonna do likewise with his children. Like what I likewise with his men and women. All right? Let me bring that out. This is Psalms 137, and we're gonna start at the seventh verse. Psalms 137 and verse 7, it reads, Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem. And the children of Edom is Esau. 
who said race it, race it, even to the foundation thereof, meaning destroy it, destroy it. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that reward of thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stone. So we're going to take their babies. We're going to dash their cherry red tomato babies against the stone. Watch them bleed out and tap dance in the blood of the wicked. Right? That's in Psalm chapter 58 and verse 10. Right? This is Psalm chapter 58 and verse 10. It say, The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. So we're going to wash our feet in the blood of the wicked. We're going to slate. We're going to thrust. We're going to put to death the so-called white man. His children along with his wives and their elderly. Everything of Edom is going to be slayed and put down. So with that, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh. Shalom.